In this video, we're going to look at using MongoDB in your Next.js applications. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamid. I'm a full stack web developer. And here on this channel, we talk all about modern web dev topics like React and Next.js. Let's go. Now you can self-host your database locally on your machine, or you can use MongoDB and their hosted solutions to create a free cluster and host your database online in the cloud and allow them to kind of manage that database for you. So I've gone ahead and created a cluster for myself. If you don't have an account, you can just create an account here by signing in and then it would just uh, onboard you to create a free cluster. Once you create a free cluster there, you can you know, create a database, maybe a collection inside of a database. Um, this is not a MongoDB tutorial, and I guess you guys already know how to work with that. Uh, I will have another uh, video in the future where I will, you know, go through different concepts in MongoDB. But for now, I'm assuming that you know MongoDB and you can just go ahead and create a cluster and a database and a collection, put some data inside of it where we would then fetch them in our Next.js application. Um, as a uh, bonus, you can just go ahead in your cluster, click this three dots and load sample data set. This is going to give you, um, if I go to this sample data set that I just imported, it's going to give you some sample databases and collections. Uh, we're going to use this sample Netflix in this video where we would have different movies here. Um, which is easier if, if you wanted to build uh, an application that uses different collections. This is already some sample data for you to work for, uh, work with. Now, um, to connect to our uh, mflix database or this cluster that we just created, if you just go back one step, we would see this connect button. Uh, and if you click on where exactly you want to connect to this database from, for example, from a MongoDB shell, from the MongoDB compass, uh, which is a desktop application that allows you to kind of interact with your databases. Uh, you might have seen this in my previous videos on this channel. Uh, but for this, uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to use a connect uh, from your application. You're going to uh, copy this uh, kind of connection string that you have, assuming that you have already uh, defined a user in the database access tab over here. Um, to kind of have a username and password that you can then plug in to this part over here uh, that connects to this specific database and allows you to interact with different collections inside this database. So let's go to our application and actually see how uh, we can uh, use MongoDB in a Next.js application. Now we're going to create a new Next.js 13 application. If you head to beta.nextjs.org, this is the new documentation for the Next.js 13. Uh, you can run npx create next app latest with this experimental flag app flag feature that allows you to kind of interact with the app directory and the new layout. Um, if you're not familiar with this, I have uh, a three part video series on the channel explaining um, you know, what's going on inside Next.js 13, the new features and the layouts and the server components and stuff. I'll link it somewhere in the card here. But nevertheless, let me just copy this and create a new Next.js application. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and install this in the current directory. And we're going to kind of follow along. I'm not going to enable TypeScript for this project. Uh, just for the purposes of, um, you know, connecting to MongoDB, we don't need TypeScript, but you are more than welcome to go ahead and um, enable type, TypeScript in, in your own project. Now, once this is done, uh, we're going to then take a look at the different uh, folders we have over here. So as you can see in the new Next.js 13, if, if you uh, pass that flag for the experimental app, you would see this app folder where it hosts some of your page components. Uh, and then you have this pages directory where it can still host your API endpoints. Um, so to be able to work with MongoDB, we would have to go ahead and install uh, MongoDB. MongoDB. Oh, sorry npm, not npx, mongodb. 
And the way that I usually like to do this is that I'll create a lib folder over here where you can put, you know, your um, utility uh, or library functions. I'll create a Mongo directory and inside of it, I'll create an index.js. And this is where um, I can kind of connect to my uh, MongoDB. And the way to do it is, um, let me just copy the code here to speed up the process. Um, and I'm going to explain what exactly we're doing. So I uh, restarted the dev server. Now inside of this MongoDB uh, file that I created inside of my lib folder, uh, if I close this for a second so we have more space, we're getting the Mongo client from MongoDB. Uh, we are reading a MongoDB URI, so we have to set this. Uh, to the connection string that we got from MongoDB website once we created our cluster. Um, if there is no URI, well, then it throws an error. And if there is, it, it's just going to go ahead and create a new Mongo client. Um, and what he is here is basically sharing this Mongo client uh, in a global variable that we can set here. So therefore, we are not cre recreating uh, this connection uh, every time that we want to query our database. If there is a connection established, we want to reuse that same connection so that we're not exhausting our connection pool. Uh, that's taking care of that instead of just exporting this client.connect as or the client promise, which then on every request that runs this module creates a new kind of client and connection, which is not ideal. So this is the first step we would have to bring in our connection string in a uh, .env file over here. So I'm going to create this .env. I'm going to pause the video, bring my connection string back, and we'll continue. OK, I copied my connection string in the .env. You should go ahead and do the same for your database to be able to kind of connect to your database. Now, one thing that I'd like to add to my project is a JS config file that allows me to define some options. So let me just copy over these options. You might be familiar with this if you've seen my videos before. So this allows us to um, kind of access whatever it is, it is in uh, the lib folder with this um, kind of at sign in the uh, in front of it instead of just going you know dot 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 dot. So something. Uh, very unnecessary for this tutorial, but that's just how I like to work. So we have created our connection. What's the next step? Well, here, let's say we want to fetch some movies. So typically I would create another movies um, kind of file, it, which is going to contain my database access objects for working with my movies collection. So let me just copy over the code that I have over here and explain what's going on over here. So. I'm going to import the client promise that we created uh, in this step, Opta. And then I'm going to kind of initialize uh, our client by getting this client promise, uh, initialize our database by getting uh, client.db. These are MongoDB uh, way of working or accessing your database. And then for movies, I'm going to go uh, db.collection and I'm going to pass the collection name, which is movies in this case. If I go ahead and show it to you here, if I go browse collections uh, in the sample mflix, which I actually passed at the end of our connection string to directly connect to this database, there is this movies collection, which contains movies and information about the movies, which we're, we're trying to kind of fetch in our Next.js app. So, uh, and I'm once I run this module, I'm, I'm calling this init function to kind of establish this connection and get a handle for my database and for my movies collection. Uh, and the way that MongoDB queries work is that you're going to use those handles to your collection and then run queries on it. Again, this is not a MongoDB tutorial. I'm going to have a video explaining these different, uh, these different uh, queries and the ways that you need to just generally work with MongoDB in a separate video. But in this video, I'm assuming you know how to kind of query and work with MongoDB, and we're just implementing it in the Next.js application. So in this file, I have uh, defined one database access object or a function called getMovies which uh, looks to see if the movies handle already exists because I'm globally defining that movies uh, handle, which is a kind of 
um, link to the collection. Um, if it, it's not available, I'm initializing or, or calling this init function again to get that handle. And then I'm going to run this query, which calls the movies collection, finds this is the way to find many re uh, resources or um, documents in MongoDB. I'm going to limit the response to 20. I'm going to map the underscore ID to the string version of un underscore ID. As you know, underscore ID in MongoDB is, is of type object ID and returning object IDs um, from server to client uh, because it's not serializable throws an error. So this is a workaround to just turn them into string so that they can be serialized when we're sending data from an API or from server to the browser. And MongoDB returns a cursor. So I have to turn that into an array. That's what this two array does. And if everything goes well, I'm returning this movie's um, kind of uh, object back to whoever is calling this get movies function. And if there's an error, well, I'll just send an uh, simple error message. I don't want to send whatever error message that was returned to me because you don't want to expose the details of your um, system to the user or to the client side. I'm just sending a generic um, kind of error message over here. Okay, so we have our connection to the database and we have our get movies function. Let's now create an endpoint API endpoint and fetch some movies to test this out. So in the API, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call this movies and inside of it, I'm going to create index.js, okay? Now let me just again, copy the code and explain what's going on here. So I have defined a handler. That's the regular way of defining endpoints in Next.js, nothing crazy. Uh, I'm expecting a get request for movies and I'm going to call this get movies function that we just defined in our MongoDB database. Uh, and I'm returning that uh, as a JSON to this API. And if anything goes wrong, I'm returning a 500 error with an error message. And I'm only expecting a get request on this endpoint. So therefore, if I receive something else, I'm going to respond with a 425. So let's go to localhost 3000 and see what's going on over here. So we have the regular homepage. As you can see, this is what comes um, stock with Next.js app. So I'm going to go to API and forward slash hello. This is again what comes in with this hello.js, which returns, if you look at it, this JSON with the name John Doe. So let me just make this a bit bigger. Okay. Now we're going to hit the movies endpoint, which is supposed to give us uh, movies. As you can see, uh, we got 20 movies back from our uh, MongoDB database. Now to take this further, why don't we go ahead and actually fetch this movies inside of our app directory in a server component and show them on our app uh, to actually show that this kind of server components and fetching data on the server side with this MongoDB connection also works in the in the app directory. So let's go to the pages. Uh, this is uh, where our home page is living. So inside of the app directory, um, again, if you're not familiar with the app directory, please watch the video that I have on the channel. Uh, you have a layout, which is kind of like the underscore app and underscore document JSC Next.js 12. And then uh, your page uh, where it would have been like index.js in an xjs 12, it's going to be a page JX inside of an app. So inside of this pages directory, I'm just going to actually um, delete everything that we have over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fetch some movies. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to define a function called fetch movies. Inside of it, I'm going to call this get movies. Um, again, the same get movies function we created to fetch movies from our database, the same thing that we used on our API. Um, and then inside of my home page, actually what I'm going to do is that 
So I'm going to call this function that gets the movies from the back end and I'm going to just map over these movies and for each one I'm just going to render their title. So we deleted everything that was there, added this function that fetches movies, called fetch movies inside of our page component and again this is the new convention these are server rendered or react server components you can turn them into a sync and fetch data directly in your page component so new concept um, and then we are just going to render uh, movies and their titles so let me just save and see what happens over here yeah as you can see we got the titles of our movies here on our page which which means that we were able to not only fetch movies or work with the database connection that we had and database access objects we created for MongoDB inside of our API routes uh, here. We were also able to fetch data on a React server component because by default, all the components in the app directory are React server components. So we were able to fetch movies there and basically show them over here. That's a wrap for this video, folks. I'm going to have a more in-depth MongoDB video in the future where we would walk through reading and writing and running different queries against MongoDB. But in this video, we just wanted to incorporate MongoDB into Next.js, learning what is the correct way of connecting to the database without uh, exhausting our connection pool or overall how to organize our project, having different files and folders for our database access functions to kind of nicely connect and get the handles to different collections and run queries against our database. We also looked at actually fetching data in the new app directory, which is running React server components by default. And we were able to fetch some movies over here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments for me. I'm pretty responsive there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.